You have neck pain, maybe back pain, or feel unbalanced. Maybe there is a pulling and pinching in some parts of your body. You sit a lot, you move very little. Then this exercise routine is perfect for you to just get out of your everyday life, out of your usual routine, and get into positions that give your body relaxation and release again. My name is Hannah. I am a trained Leapshire and Brack therapist. This routine goes for 20 minutes, and we hold each position for two minutes. It's super, super important that you go through the two minutes with me so that you can get the best result for yourself. Let's get right into it then. So sit on your mat, the soles of your feet come together and push your feet away from your body. The angle from your knees should be greater than 90 degrees. Completely round your torso, roll your head in and pull your torso towards your feet. You can then feel the stretch up your thighs towards your buttocks, lower back, upper back, and also up into your head. If you find that you somehow want to get out of the position or it's hurting you too much, please don't pull all the way out. Just back off enough to hold the exercise with me for the two minutes. It doesn't matter how far down you go. The important thing is that the stretch feels good to you. It can be intense, it can hurt a little, maybe pinch, but it has to be done in such a way that you can still breathe easily. This exercise is especially good for getting the tension out of our posterior chain. This means especially the back muscles are stretched long. Slowly release, and we come directly to the second exercise. Extend your left leg out in front of you. Push your knee through to the floor. Pull your toes inward towards your body and grab your foot with your hands. If you can't reach your foot yet, no problem at all. Grab a towel or a belt. If you don't have anything handy, just grab your lower leg and pull yourself towards your foot a bit. Again, we're going to hold for two minutes. Why do we hold for the two minutes? Our fascial system only starts to let go after 30 seconds. After two minutes, we also have the most blood flow we can have in a stretch. And blood flow always means regeneration. The stretch should be on the back of the leg here. Very good. And release slowly. Switch sides, extend your right leg, push your knee toward the floor and pull your toes towards you. 
walk your upper body a little forward toward your foot. Feel free to grab your lower leg as well. It depends on how far you can get so you can feel the stretch, but it's still bearable for you. What happens in a stretch? In the stretch, you're sort of pulling your tissues apart. All the metabolic waste products that are stuck in your tissues can now be removed. That means your body has a lot of work to do. If you want to support that, drink enough water to get it all out. Breathe deeply. And when the stretching subsides, move your upper body forward a bit. If you do these exercises regularly, you will see that you get further and further. Release slowly. Stand on your toes and slowly move your weight backward. If you find that's too much weight, just prop yourself up on the floor in front. This is very important. Make sure that your heels don't tip outwards, but that they are nicely vertical so that you have a good stretch for the underside of your feet. It is very important that you include your feet in the stretching program. Our feet carry us throughout our lives, and especially in the area of the foot's fascia that stretches from the heel towards the ball of the toe. There is not much blood flow anyway. If you stretch the whole thing, you promote blood circulation and thus also regeneration, which means the pain that might arise in the foot has no chance to occur in the first place. If you notice that you can do it, you can also sit on your heels here. You're almost there. Regular exercise, regular stretching gives you a general sense of well-being. You're fitter and you're not as tired as often either. And you probably even notice that you have less pain all around. Put your feet down and we'll move on to the next exercise. If it's possible, sit on your heels. If not, prop yourself up in front like I'm doing right now and slowly walk backwards step by step. If that's for you, you can sit on your heels. Then make a little cup with your heels so that you can put your butt in between so you can walk backward better. Stay with the stretch where it's bearable for you. And if you can, go a little further back. Get your arms behind your body, keep your knees on the floor, and very importantly, pull the belly button toward your spine.
The stretch here is in the thigh. You may also feel it in the instep of your foot. So your ankle will be stretched as well. The exercise is super good for your knees, but also your pelvic area. And if you notice that you tend to have a hollow back, you also have a balancing through this exercise. Slowly come back out of the exercise and we'll stretch your forearms and wrists. Close your fingers and place your hands in front of you so that the fingers point towards you. The further you get your shoulder behind your fingers, the higher and stronger the stretch will be. Only go as far back as you can stand. You know the exercise is held for two minutes. If you realize, okay, that was a bit much, then feel free to go forward again a bit. The exercise is super important for anyone who works a lot with their hands to take the tension out of the flexor muscles. Come out of the exercise slowly, circle your wrists. Because after the exercises, it can feel a little heavy for a moment. That is perfectly fine. Come into the quadrupedal position, take your hands a little further forward and outward, and let your pelvis hang to the floor. If you feel you have pain in your back, please lie down. Come up on your elbows first, And if that's okay for your back, then feel free to push yourself a little higher. The important thing with this exercise is that you don't have any pain in your back. A tug, a slight pinch is okay. Pain, definitely not. With the exercise, we're stretching the hip, the front muscles of the hip, and also the abdomen. And now, if you breathe deeply in and out through your nose, into your abdomen, you also have super good mobilization for your diaphragm. Your diaphragm has a huge influence on your abdominal organs and digestion. Stick out your chest, And as always, hold for two minutes. If you notice that the stretching is decreasing, then push yourself up a little further. If there's any pain, just go back a little and stay in this position for the rest of the time. Release very slowly lie down and round yourself. 
This can look like I'm doing right now, sitting on your feet and just resting your head on the mat in front of you, or you can do a cat bend. Just getting into the opposite position that you were just in. Take a few deep breaths here, and we'll move on to the next exercise. Slide your body all the way to the edge of the mat. Place your left arm diagonally. You can orient yourself to the corner of your mat. Very important here, don't turn your upper arm in, but keep your armpit facing the floor. Put your right leg out, angle slightly, and your right hand comes up to face level. And you can support yourself a little bit with your right arm, with your right hand, and keep turning up so you feel that good stretch in your chest area. That can go all the way into your fingers as well. That is all perfectly fine. But watch your limit. You know two minutes can be long. It's super important to stretch these chest muscles. When our chest muscles are free, we have a whole different alignment. And the more tension on it, the more your shoulders go forward and the more your neck stretches through to the front. To improve your posture, it is essential to stretch your chest. When the stretch decreases, push yourself a little further into the stretch by twisting up more or putting more pressure on the floor with your right hand. slowly release and slide to the left edge of the mat. And we do the same on the right side. Orient yourself to the corner of the mat again. Put your arm down upward, left hand at face level, and importantly, turn your right shoulder inward. This means that your armpit is facing the floor. Angle your right leg so that you feel a good stretch in the chest area. It may also be there is a bit of a pull over the shoulder into the fingers. This is completely normal. Your nerve plexus is located directly at the collarbone and fascially the pectoral muscle has a huge influence on it. This means that if your fingers tingle or if there is perhaps a bit of a pull, it is simply due to the pull on your pectoral muscle, on the tissues that could irritate the nerve fibers to some extent. You can do this routine every day in the morning or the evening. It has a special effect on your body in the morning because it gives you an energy boost that you need for the day, even though it may not feel like it in the morning. Afterward, you will feel what I mean. But also in the evening, a super nice method to simply release the tension of the day and go to sleep relaxed. and release. Very, very good. Now we'll come to the last exercise. And that is a breathing exercise. Breathe in through your nose, put your arms up, exhale through the mouth, bringing your hands down in front of your body. Breathe out until you have no more air in. Bend forward, pushing the remaining air out of your lungs. Close your mouth and nose, straighten up again, and then inhale without taking a breath.
What exactly happens? You push your diaphragm down. As you inhale without letting air into your lungs, you're pushing your diaphragm down. Because you have not inhaled any air, the diaphragm goes back up very quickly. Repeat this several times until you have a natural reflex to take a breath. Then open your nose and mouth and take a deep breath and let your breath settle down again. Take your time, feel free to close your eyes, and round two begins. Inhale through your nose, bring your arms up, exhale through your mouth, bring your hands down in front of your body, push all the air out, 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 round yourself, and exhale any remaining air. Close your nose and mouth, straighten up, and inhale without taking a breath. Make sure you do this slowly and repeat it as many times as you can. And when the reflex comes that you need to take a breath, take a deep breath. Very, very good. Breathe in and out calmly. Let your breath settle down again. Inhalation stimulates the oxygen level in the blood and thus increases our efficiency. Exhalation, on the other hand, deacidifies our body. Inhale through your nose, bring your arms up, exhale through your mouth, bring your arms down in front of your body, breathe out and let out all the air that is still inside, round yourself and blow out any remaining air, close your mouth and nose, straighten up, and then do that inhaling without taking a breath. Repeat this as many times as you can. And take one deep breath and let your breath settle back down. You did a great job. With this routine, you've stretched your whole body from top to bottom while also detoxifying. Remember to drink plenty of fluids to help your body flush out all those waste products that have gotten loose. If you wanna learn more about your body and health or about pain, how it happens and how to get rid of it, then subscribe to our newsletter and click here in the upper right corner. And click here to subscribe to our channel. Watch another video and we'll show you more exercises and stretching routines for you. Join us now. We're waiting for you.